But enough about that. Let's talk to Tim Budick. Uh, we're going to bring him out. And as he's walking up, if we can get his attention, uh, he is the president of the Brown and Gold Club, a 2002 graduate. And this is going to spin some wheels because we had to have a conversation about this earlier. A 2002 graduate, four-year letter winner in cross country and track and field. But he was the runner-up in the steeplechase in 2003. So he graduated in 2002. Maybe he'll get in to tell you a little bit about how uh, maybe Coach T bent some rules, maybe. I don't know. I'm just not going to make any assumptions. But he did go on and, and, and was the NCAA runner-up in the, in the steeplechase in 2003. Still the OAC record holder in the steeplechase. Uh, barely. 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 Uh, he did uh, sneak out to the track meet BW hosted last year, make sure – he showed up, uh, ironically, right before the steeplechase started to make sure uh, his record stood, and it, it still stands today. So, Tim, welcome. Appreciate it. Thanks uh, for having me. Yeah, I'm really, really excited to have a little conversation and kind of carry on some of the stuff we talked about, but really turn the floor over to you just to talk a little bit about the Brown and Gold Club. Yeah, I mean, it's a, a great organization, obviously, to support student-athletes uh, of, of Baldwin Wallace University. Um, you know, alumni can be involved. Um, I'm obviously the president of the board, but we have a great board. Um, a lot of um, impact that we make through uh, our events that we host, uh, the reverse raffle being the biggest one to, to raise funds that we uh, directly give back to the, the, um, the sports um, through, a, through, a, through a process that we want to make sure that what we're giving back, what we're raising, the funds that we're doing um, are impacting as many student athletes as possible at Baldwin Wallace, right? So um, we really try to tailor it to, to um, items that impact all of the sports um, or as many as possible, right? Um, but we're, we're marching in the, um, or in the, in the parade for, for brown and gold. Uh, Bold and Gold Love that. on uh, October 22nd. So great to have people come out and join us and learn more about uh, the Brown and Gold Club. Yeah, no, I love that. You mentioned the parade and marching in the parade. Uh, I'll put a little plug in, too. At, yep. Right after, as you're done marching, we, we will have a Brown and Gold tailgate right by the Packard Correct. as well. They can sneak some snack foods, maybe have a cocktail or two. So come walk in the parade and, and, and touch on that. But you, you mentioned some of the support you do for student athletes. Can can you talk about a couple of projects uh, during your time and involvement with uh, the Brown and Gold Club that you have done? Uh, for yeah, BW? I mean, we've done some um, stuff for baseball with the new 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 netting on the on the backstop of, of the baseball stadium. Uh, we did um, obviously some uh, um, some chairs um, for for multiple sports, the volleyball, the basketball yep. programs, uh, where we got involved in that funding we also did a project within the um the, the the rec center where we did kind of a hallway dedicated to all the sports um and members of the hall of fame committees or, or you know standout athletes over the years including um you know just the kind of it, it helps with recruiting it helps with the kind of the the entryway and the passage it, throughout the uh the rec center for people to come and visit campus um, and kind of get kind of a, a reflection of like the, the past, the historic relevance yeah. of the athletics at BW and also like the, the student athletes that are representing the, the Yellow Jackets today. Yeah, I, I, I tell you, like I said I, earlier, I, I've been here a year and through the interview process, one of the things I wanted to do on my interview of COVID, right, I wasn't allowed on campus. So before uh, I accepted a job, I asked President Helmer for a tour. And I had been on campus. Uh, I, I'm, I'm a 01 bachelor's degree guy from another institution. Uh, so it had been 20-some years since I've been to Baldwin Wallace's mm -hmm. campus. And, and I remembered the gym and the, and the mods, the rec center there. But walking down that tunnel yeah. as a older man that works in athletics, I won't say how old because it's been too long, uh, but that really had a lot of pop to it. Uh, and I know our coaches really appreciate that. You know, that brand, the, the, the BW brand, the Stinger brand, as, as athletic director, we continue to try to put that out there. But it really starts with what people see when they step on campus. So that, that is a huge part uh, of what our recruits see and, and, and interact with and, and helps get the next Tim Budick on our campus. Yeah, I mean, I appreciate that. I mean, I think it's just the way that things are marketed nowadays, right? There's a lot of visuals to everything that we do, whether it's social media, Instagram, everything's can, you know, they say a picture's worth a thousand words. It is. If you walk that hallway, there's a lot of words and a lot of history that gets wrapped up in a pretty quick process. So to kind of build that out and, and, and bring that kind of corridor 
um, you know, t to fruition was was pretty was a pretty cool project for the Brown and Gold Club. Yeah, no, I I love it. What where do you see kind of maybe some directions in the future here? Maybe in this year, uh, what what are you looking at poss as possibilities? I won't hold you to it, but yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, we, we want to <laughs> obviously support the wrestling program. They've been such a great program. You know, um, you know, being on that national stage. So um, they're they're obviously do some upgrades uh, in regards to wrestling mats and equipment and stuff like that. So we're focusing on that. Um, and also, you know, again, impacting as many students as possible and creating kind of like that, um, that environment uh, of, of, of excitement. So there's, you know, these inflatable, you know, t uh, inflatable tunnel that we can set up in multiple areas where yep. a, lot of the, a lot of the teams run through, whether it's indoor sports or over at Finney for the, for the football team. Um, or introductions for certain sports, um, putting our putting our funds towards that sort of stuff. Um, again, to, to your point, enhance the brand and impact our student athletes. No, I, I love that. So, talk about your experience then, as as you're a recruited athlete. Uh, by really, and and you know, I'm blessed that the coaches I get to work with are some titans, right? Mm -hmm. uh, are yep. some Baldwin Wallace legends here. You ran for probably one of the three or four coaches that go up on Mount Rushmore of Baldwin Wallace coaches. You got to compete for one. Yep. So, so talk a little bit about how you were recruited. What you see as different today, maybe, and, and, and challenges then to, to now, and, and just those different experiences. Yeah, I mean, obviously, running for Coach Tarasky was was an honor. Um, you know, and just it's just uh, you know the more the more and more you reflect on. Um, the, the program he built, the tradition he built, um, the relationships he built amongst us, um, the, you know, and anyone that ran or competed for Coach Trasky in, in, in track or cross country um, have an instant connection, right? He, he, he was big on family. Him and his wife, Denny, were big on that creating that family atmosphere, and it truly was, right? It sounds cliche, and it's what everyone will tell you, um, but I think because of how they managed, his door was always open. He was always more willing to have a conversation with you as a person, as a student, as a young adult, and then anything you did as an athlete was secondary, right? So it didn't matter about your performance. He was there for you as a person, yeah. which I think at that age point of 18 to 22 is very extremely important, right? And I just remember the recruiting process with him. He was so laid back in his recruiting process, <laughs> but he was he was consistent, he was persistent, he was always there at the big meets. Um, he had a tradition of always going to the, um, the state meet. And just like anywhere, anyone that knows Coach T, he always held court. <laughs> whether it was on a folding chair at the corner of a track or inside of a gator or a golf cart, his presence was known. If he was in an area or vicinity, his presence was known. Right? Yeah. And the same thing at the track at the state meet, right? He'd sit at Ohio's, uh, Ohio Stadium when the horseshoe still hosted the track meet, and he would cool. sit on the back stretch about halfway up, and he wouldn't come seek you out. He would let you know he was there prior and then you as an athlete felt honored that he was there and you would actually go march up the stands either before <laughs> or after your event, sit down with him, visit with him for a few minutes. He literally just didn't move. Like, and, and again, it wasn't out of arrogance that he made you come to him, but I think it was just that understanding of like, listen, I'm always here for you. You, you just come to me as you need me, right? Yeah. He didn't force it upon you. He, didn't, he wasn't very... Uh, forceful in his methods. He was just consistent, persistent, and always there. He was just like that steady, steady, steady um, uh, mentor uh, you can always go towards. Yeah, I, th I think it's funny you m you mentioned the whole court. So, so obviously he had passed before I was hired, uh, and a couple months into my job, uh, we went out and I got a chance to visit with Denny, uh, and and just hear some of those stories, and and so start to build a relationship, which which means a lot to me to understand the history of BW and, and those impactful moments. But but fast forward, she showed up first for the Hall of Fame la ceremony last year uh, and essentially said there was no way I wasn't coming to this. And then fast forward to the conference track meet she, uh, in the spring, her daughter's supposed to pick her up. I'll probably get her in trouble again. Her daughter doesn't show up. Yep. Then he still gets in the car and comes. Yep. And she essentially held court in a golf yes. cart in the Absolutely. rain, and and the the amount of OAC coaches that came up, not yep. just BW people, because yep. uh, plenty of BW people did, but OAC coaches came up and shook her hand, spent time with her. So that holding court is is a family thing, a hundred percent. But yep. but from her, there's a lot of stories. Yep. 
Uh, what's one Coach T story you'd, you'd, you'd touch on? Oh, man, most of them I can't tell. Those are the best. I, yeah, I, I think I think the value of him and I <laughs> were, was, were that um, we were both equally as stubborn. I mean, he's probably one of the most stubborn individuals I've ever met in my life. And I think um, what he – what he saw in me was I was a mini him, right? Um, I just remember, you know, lots of stories where on our Florida trips for track and field, right? And just, just kind of how he let us be young adults. Um, and, and by being young adults, you would get into trouble and you would do a lot of stuff <laughs> that you weren't supposed to be doing. And even in, in, in the ways he would reprimand us, right? There was, a, there was a lesson to be learned. He would come down hard on you. But you always knew that the next day or the next interaction with him, that it, it, was, it was gone. It was, it was behind you. He never, Love that. He never held um, any of your decisions or in-the-moment reactions as a young adult against you, right? It was always a clean slate. What can we do to move forward? What can we do to do better, right? And, um, you know, I, I think the biggest thing about Coach T was he had great sayings, right? He always had his go-to sayings, <laughs> and, and, and most of them are, are non-PC, but <laughs> – um, you know, and, and you'd end up, like, attaching yourself to these sayings, and we would print T-shirts, and we would have the front of our refrigerators, and, and when we were living off campus, would have pictures of him. And what we'd do is we'd search the Internet for young, young pictures of him while he was coaching in Nebraska, <laughs> and then we would take that image and then marry it up with, like, sayings that he, that he would constantly reiterate oh, to us over and over and over again. Yeah. So – he was a man, he was a, a myth and a legend, right? And then we would, he would just, he had this ability to never, um, like, kind of, like, tote that himself, but, like, we would all do it for him, right? Yeah. So we would build him up more and more and more and more. <laughs> and, like, we, we loved, there's nothing more than, like, loving to, like, kind of feed into that, that legendary status yeah. that he had, right? It was good to kind of feed him up because he never took himself too serious. Super cerebral, super intelligent, always composed. Very, very rarely did I ever see him lose his temper. And when he did, it was warranted, and it was never, like, <laughs> over the line, right? Right. Um, but for us to kind of be his biggest advocates, he never wanted the spotlight. And I think one of the best things was we always wanted to put him in the spotlight, whether it was just as a person or to go out and compete for him. Um, at the end of the day, like, I, I love my time at Baldwin Wallace. I love my time being a Yellow Jacket. But, I mean, I ran for Coach Jurassic. I ran for, for myself selfishly, and I ran for Coach Jurassic. Yeah. And I don't know if there's there's anyone, uh, another coach in my life that I would say that for. I, I think that starts, uh, and again, it's 14 months of history I can talk yep. Uh, yep. about at BW, but I, I think that's the thread that really runs through the successful history of BW athletics is it's, they came here, student athletes got great educations. You got a great education, you had a great experience, but, but the coach that changed their life, uh, whether that be Lee Tressel, Bill Taraski, all like Sherry Hare now, like we, we are blessed. Uh, Jamie Gibbs, you mentioned wrestling earlier, Brian Harrison, I, I could go on and on. Uh, but that is, is something that BW owns and, and, and we need to do a better job owning it really. As the athletic director, I would say that of telling those stories of the, of the great coaches because the influence they can have on your life. Speaking of influences on your life, uh, I'm sure your wife, who's also a tremendous track athlete, Hannah Budick, uh, a new employee at BW as well, yeah. had some She's influence. Uh, she she is back at BW. And, yep, yep. Uh, but any truth to the rumor that she was a way better runner than you? Um, probably. Probably. <laughs> I mean, if you were going to list definitely would be a longer list than mine absolutely no doubt about it through um uh you know the alumni page and the athletic yep page. it's on the bw yellow um, yep, yep. B, yep bw alumni at, at b, uh, bw.edu as well if you want to connect to us through through email um but i'll put, put my email and my cell phone personal uh in this and and i would love to hear from folks outstanding yep. tim thank you appreciate so very it. much i appreciate it absolutely. yeah absolutely yep, Look forward to working with you throughout your tenure as president. Absolutely. Thank you, Steve. <laughs> All right. Thank you to Tim for joining us right there. Now we're